What game should I review this time? If I don't feed my addiction to nostalgia soon, then what happened last time might happen again. And nobody wants that. Especially my neighbours. Oh hey bub, I was just saying, I'm looking for a game to play that I can review. Huh? Oh yeah, this is a Bubble Bobble t-shirt. Do you like it? Why don't I review it? Well, I don't normally review t-shirts. Oh, you mean the actual game. Hmm, okay, I'll give it a whirl. Thanks for the suggestion. Hello and welcome to Rob's Retro Reviews. Today we're taking a look at Bubble Bobble, but not the NES version, which is probably the most popular and well-known of the home console ports, even being featured on the NES Mini. No, instead, we're taking a look at the PS1 version, simply because it's the one that I grew up playing. As you can tell from my t-shirt and this awesome plush toy, I'm a pretty big fan of Bubble Bobble. That's because I used to play it as a kid all the time with my family, so it holds a special place in my gaming life. However, this is a review, so I'm going to try and look at it without rose-tinted glasses on. So let's pop it in and take a look. Bubble Bobble was developed by Taito and was originally released in August 1986 as an arcade game. The arcade version was extremely well received, which resulted in it being ported to pretty much every device imaginable. It was on a ton of home computer systems, the Master System, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, PlayStation, Sega Saturn, NES, Game Gear, and more. So it was a pretty big deal back in its day. However, in 1996 it was discovered that the code used for the original game and its ports up until that point had been lost, resulting in Probe Entertainment, the team who was in charge of porting Bubble Bobble to home consoles at the time, having to recode and basically remake the game from the ground up by simply playing it over and over again, using the original arcade version of the game that Taito sent them. The PS1 version of the game is one of these remade versions of Bubble Bobble, published by Acclaim Entertainment and developed by Taito and Probe Entertainment. The disc not only features Bubble Bobble, but a port of Rainbow Islands, which is a sort of sequel spin-off to Bubble Bobble, which makes it worth having in your collection even more. However, we're not here to talk about Rainbow Islands, we're here for some Bubble Bobble action, so let's get on with it. Huh. A cutscene. With this being an arcade port, I didn't expect that. Let's watch and see what happens. So, a pelican flies past a rainbow and heads towards three islands while more rainbows appear. An absolutely grotesque version of Bub, the main character of Bubble Wobble, attempts to grab a parchment with the logo for his game on it. A bee appears and attempts to grab the parchment after Bub loses it, but then ends up stuck in some jelly. A caterpillar watches from the sidelines and then a lunatic runs into a cannon and gets shot through a lollipop. Meanwhile, a spider dances in a pipe while a fish eats the parchment. Then the parchment escapes, and there ends the cutscene. I honestly have no idea what they were on when they made this, but it has no relevance to Bubble Bobble or Rainbow Islands for that matter. They could have actually given us the story of Bubble Bobble in a cutscene, which would have been the first time that was ever done, but instead they gave us this acid trip. The actual story of Bubble Bobble is written in the manual, and involves two boys, called Bub and Bob, who are turned into bubble-blowing dinosaurs by an evil wizard, and then having the girlfriends stolen and taken 100 floors under the earth. They then have to go through each of these floors one by one using the new dinosaur abilities, and put a stop to the wizard's evil ways. I would have loved to have seen this in a cutscene, but I suppose beggars can't be choosers. The main menu is rather basic, but being a port of an arcade game from 1986, this is forgivable. What is cool is that you can listen to all of the different songs and sound effects used in the game by going into the options menu. You can also select the amount of credits you want to have at the start of the game. I recommend you go with 15, because this game's difficulty is no joke. Without further ado, let's start the game. Bubble Bobble is a single screen platformer, meaning that the camera doesn't scroll at all and each level consists of one self-contained screen. If you jump into a pit you'll fall from the top of the screen rather than simply dying, which adds an element of tactics into the game. Do you approach enemies from below, or fall from the top? It's up to you. 
Enemies can also use this tactic though, so you have to be watching every part of the screen at once to keep yourself from being caught off guard by an enemy you didn't see. The main gimmick of the game is that rather than shooting enemies and killing them straight away, you instead shoot them and trap them in a bubble, which you can then either pop using your horns, your spiky back, or by jumping on them. Or you can use them as a makeshift platform to bounce on. By walking directly into the trapped enemies, you can gather them together and burst them in a huge group for a massive score boost. Scoring Bubble Bobble isn't just for showing off either. Upon getting 30,000 points, you'll be rewarded with a 1-up, and then you'll be rewarded with yet another 1-up for getting to 100,000 points. After that though, the score doesn't do anything, so I guess at that point it is just used to show off. This is a bit of a shame, I think there should have been more score goals to reach in order to get more rewards. Beating high score is always a nice challenge, but I enjoy there being more substance to it. After getting 100,000 points, you might be thinking, how do I get 1-ups now? And luckily, there is another way of doing this. In most stages of the game, you'll see bubbles appear that have letters on them. If you pop one of these bubbles, the corresponding letter will appear on the left of the screen. Use these letters to spell the word EXTEND, and you'll not only be awarded with an extra 1-up, but also skip the level you are on. It's a double reward. You could even consider it to be a triple reward when you hear the jolly EXTEND music. There's a ton of items to collect, most of which will simply boost your score slightly, like the various fruit, gems, and other food. Some special items will affect your abilities though, like the sweets, which give you a longer range on your bubbles, make your bubbles fly out of your mouth quicker, and allow you to rapid fire your bubbles. There's also these pink shoes, which allow you to move a lot faster, but also make you jump a lot heavier. Any of these power-ups can be stacked with each other, but upon dying, you'll lose all of them. Which might seem a bit harsh, but I think it's a good incentive to not die, beyond simply losing a 1-up. As well as the permanent power-ups, you can gain certain powers that last for a single level, like Fire Breath and a Time Stopper, so you need to keep your eyes peeled for interesting looking items at all times. You can also find items that kill all the enemies on the screen instantly. They can do this by shooting balls everywhere, making stars fall from the sky, by filling the level up with water, and more. It's quite rare to find one of these items though, so it makes it feel extremely powerful and rewarding when you do use one. There's also umbrellas, which, for some reason, makes you skip a certain number of levels instantly. By getting either a cane or a jewellery box, you'll spawn a huge item of food or a huge gem in the bottom middle of the level after you've defeated all the enemies, and by collecting this, you'll earn a massive amount of score, so it's worth keeping an eye out for those too. This is a lot of different items and powers you can acquire, and it might seem a little bit daunting at first, but you'll quickly learn what to keep an eye out for as you play it, and it's easy to learn what does what. You can't take your time while collecting all of these items though, because if you spend too long in a level, a skeleton shark will appear, and he can't be stopped until every enemy in the level is killed. This adds a lot of tension into the game because it always feels like there's an invisible clock ticking down, and if the shark appears, it will most likely catch you and kill you, because it constantly homes in on your position. Now that we've gone through the basics, let's go through the game together! The first few levels are quite uneventful, and exist to primarily teach you the mechanics of the game. The first enemies you encounter will be these wind-up robots that kill you by walking into you, and don't have any projectile attacks. The main way these things will catch you off guard is if they outnumber you, and back you into a tight spot. Soon after that though, you'll bump into these white ghost things, that at first appear to be the same as the previous enemies, but they can actually fire a red ball that slowly travels towards you, and can't be stopped until it hits a wall. These can catch you off guard very easily if there's a lot of bubbles on the screen, so you've got to pay attention. So far so good! This game's not actually as hard as I remember it being. The next enemies you'll find are these flying sharks, which will dart around the screen in their attempts to kill you. These enemies add a greater degree of danger because up until now, any enemy that's been falling onto you has been predictable because they fall straight down and can't move until they hit the floor, but this isn't the case with these sharks. You'll also begin to encounter elemental bubbles, which will kill enemies in a variety of ways upon popping them. First you have these water bubbles, which cause a small flood to fall to the bottom of the screen, killing any enemies that get caught by it. You can also use these to travel quickly around the stage by getting caught in it yourself. But don't worry, it doesn't kill you, and you can jump out at any time. There's also lightning bubbles, which shoot a bolt of electricity out in the opposite direction to where you're facing, which is handy because these bolts can travel through walls. Finally, we have these fire bubbles, which upon popping them will make a small fire fall to the floor and kill any enemies who come into contact with it. Because of the simple gameplay mechanics, you might be thinking that there's not much variation in the level design, but these simple mechanics combined with these elemental bubbles can actually create some interesting puzzles. 
You might also go back and play the game and notice more efficient ways of completing certain levels by putting these special elemental bubbles to use. Speaking of replaying the game, there is actually quite a bit of replay value to be had here, not only because you might want to see if there was a better way of doing a level you got stuck on, but also because most of the items that spawn will be randomised, meaning that you might get different abilities at different parts of the game, which can change how you play certain stages. Not only that, but the score system might leave you wanting to see how high you can get your score, although this isn't for me personally. Going back to the enemies now though, the next ones you encounter will be these weird flying yellow blobs, and to be honest, these don't really add much to the game. They follow more of a set pattern than the sharks do, but other than that, they're exactly the same. These are the only throwaway enemies though, because the next ones introduced are all vastly different from anything you've seen in the game so far. First there's these mushrooms who will bounce around on a spring and can extremely easily catch you off guard from below. Then there's these green wizards who focus more on using projectiles as the main offensive move. Unlike the white ghosts who throw slow-moving red balls at you, these wizards will throw fast-moving boomerang-style projectiles that will bounce on walls and come back to the wizard that threw it. This means you not only have the wizard himself to avoid, but also the boomerang when it's first been thrown, and the boomerang when it's on its way back too. But the madness doesn't stop here, there's also these bug enemies that will shoot extremely quick-moving projectiles at you, which are probably the hardest thing in the game to avoid because of the speed that they travel at. Then the last enemies to be introduced are these robots that move from left to right at an extremely high speed. While doing this, they'll also shoot fire down the screen, meaning that you not only have to watch above in case you get hit, but pay attention to make sure they don't crash into you too. If you're wondering why I've been using the same background music for this entire video, it's because this is the only song you're going to be hearing for 99 levels of this game. The only break you're going to get from it is if you get a secret area, get an extend, or get to level 100 so you had better get used to hearing this on a loop. Each of the enemies in Bubble Bobble are implemented in such a way that really works with the level design. Sure, there are some throwaway levels where it feels like things were placed kind of randomly, but then you have levels which only work as well as they do because of the enemies used. Take for example this level which forces you to make your way to the middle of the stage while avoiding fire from above, and fall down a hole to appear at the top of the screen where bubbles are appearing so you can bounce away from the enemies onto a ledge and kill them all. However, if you mistime your initial fall down the hole, it could result in getting killed by the mushroom enemies, who are the only ones capable of getting you when you're on the ledge. And you could also potentially get killed by them as you fall onto the bubble to get to the ledge safely, because of the way that they jump. This level is only as challenging as it is because of the variety in enemies, and the clever designs of the levels which complement these enemies. It's an easy thing to overlook, but sometimes the minimal, yet intelligent level designs in Bubble Bobble can be fantastic. Now we're approaching the end of the game, and things are getting tough. And when I say tough, I mean downright unfair! I'm just gonna come out and say it. Level 83 of Bubble Bobble for the PS1 is absolute rubbish. It's the one level in the whole game that feels completely unfair, and it shouldn't have been put into the game. Maybe I'm missing something, but it seems to be completely based on luck as to how you complete it. You clear out most of the enemies, and things feel fine. But then you notice this one enemy in the middle of the level, and the only possible way of reaching him is to get into the middle, shoot a bubble, and bounce up to his section and shoot him just before he crashes into you. The issue here is that because he's moving so fast, it's pretty much impossible to time the firing of your bubble and the actual bounce on the bubble to be able to get to his level and shoot him. I died so much on this level, and I would be happy if I never had to play it again. I hate it, and I hate him. Now that I've got that out of my system, I can talk about some of the later levels of the game. The last five levels basically act as a test of how well you've mastered the more advanced mechanics of the game. Things like bouncing on bubbles, falling down pits, catching enemies in bubbles with the right timing, and falling and shooting enemies through walls will need to be fully mastered if you want to finish this game. There are two levels which test your bubble bubble skills more than any others though. First is level 97, where you have to move lightning bubbles into a position so that they move down a small gap, which you can't fall down, and then burst a water bubble at just the right time so that you can get caught in it and move down the previously inaccessible gap, and burst the lightning bubble on the way down, thus making it move across the screen and kill an enemy who is boxed in by walls. It's a test of timing, and a test of how well you know the game and can manipulate the elemental bubbles, and it's all the more tense when you're under a constant time pressure because of the skeleton sharks. 
Then there's level 99, which tests how accurate you are at platforming, making it so that one tiny slip up will result in you dying or having to wait for the skeleton sharks to kill you after getting trapped. These two levels almost turn the game from a single screen platformer into a puzzle platformer because of the amount of thinking and forward planning you have to do to make sure you don't screw up. And it's great that these stages are some of the last ones because it makes it feel like you've really overcome a trial by getting to the final level. You might be noticing these weird levels that have letters placed in them. Sometimes it makes sense and they say actual words, but other times they seem to be abbreviations. But abbreviations for what? There's HC, MTJ, IF, NSO, and more. If anyone knows what these are, then let me know, because I have no idea, and there's loads of them. One of my biggest issues with Bubble Bobble is how the difficulty curve is all over the place. You'll just be going through the game, strolling along, and hit a seriously difficult level, which seems to have been placed randomly. Then it'll go back to being a breeze for a while, and then slap you across the face with another infuriating level. I don't know why they did this rather than just putting all of the hard levels at the end of the game, but it does feel a little bit disjointed as you're playing through it. Well, we're finally here. Let's see what waits for us in the final level. Level 100. Here you need to grab these lightning bottles which make you shoot lightning bubbles and then burst them in such a way that it hits the massive green wizard. And would you listen to that? Actual boss music that's different to the track we've been hearing for the past 99 levels. It's actually a really good song too, it's a shame they didn't create more music for the rest of the levels, because that is one aspect of the game which is really bad. It makes the whole game feel a bit repetitive and mundane. But anyway, I'm getting off course. We're here to kill this boss. No! I died on the last boss and there's no saving. That means I have to go back to the start of the game and do that all over again. I'm not having this. I'm getting some help. Bob? Get over here. We did it! We beat the boss and we can finally see what happens at the end! It... It crashed. Okay. One more time I'm going to go through this game, and I won't die on the final boss, and it better not crash. I will see the end of this game, even if I have to kill someone to do it. We've finally done it! Now we can see what happens at the end of Bubble Bubble. Wait a minute. Because the second player was in the middle of using a credit when we beat the final boss, it didn't count as us doing it on two player? And we got the bad ending? I swear to God, this will be the last time that I do this, and I will be victorious. And you, you had better not be using a credit when we beat the final boss, otherwise you're gonna get a good hard slap. We've done it! Now let's properly see what the true ending is. Congratulations! Now, you found the most important magic in the world. It's love and friendship. Ah, that's nice. But wait, 
It was not a true ending. What? Well, how do I get the true ending, then? Write eight big words on a paper. This is a key of a secret game. What? What words? What are you talking about? Hints of these words, no miss clear, round one to twenty, and enter the silver door. Okay, so if I don't die, a secret will open in level twenty and show me eight big words. Let's try it. I don't see anything here that hints towards eight big words. Wait, of course. There are 26 symbols on the top line, obviously replacing the 26 letters of the alphabet. By looking at the code we were given by getting the good ending of the game, we can cross-reference it with this and work out what the message is saying. Even after doing that, this symbol isn't registered in the alphabet, so what could these letters mean? Well, R could be right, B could be bubble, L could be left, and J could be jump, leaving this weird S shape which therefore must mean start, because that's the only input left that Bubble Bobble uses. But before I try that, what does all this other text say? Well, after a while of decoding it all, it says, If you want to become the old figure, use power of your friendship and fight with me. Which obviously is talking about playing the two-player mode to fully complete the game. But what does become the old figure mean? The text on the end screen says, The key of Superver, and then gives us a code, which translates to RSB, L R J B S. So let's try and input this code on the title screen by assuming they refer to the inputs on the controller. Hmm, it doesn't work, because as soon as you press start or jump, it skips past the title screen, and you can't enter it anywhere else either. Maybe with the second controller? Nope, that doesn't work either. No matter what you do, you don't seem to be able to access this secret mode. The reason seems to be because of an oversight that the developers made, which means that pressing the jump or start button will make the title screen disappear, rendering the code useless. Strange. This is very intriguing, and I would be interested to know if there actually is a Super Bubble Bobble mode programmed into the game, and if anyone has any luck with accessing it legitimately. I've tried on the main title screen, the main menu, and even the game select menu, and nothing has worked. I've even tried pressing select instead of start and still had no luck, so if anyone has any further information on this, I would be super interested to know more. I know that the original arcade version of Bubble Bobble had a secret super mode that actually is accessible, but I'm interested in the PS1 version specifically, just because it seems like a strange oversight for the developers to make for something which could have been an amazing extra mode. For now though, I'm going to assume that I've finished the game to completion. This is one of the best ports of Bubble Bobble you could hope to play. It feels extremely responsive and slick, it looks just as good as the arcade version, and it's a fantastic two-player co-op game to play if you've got a friend who's into retro gaming. It is a little bit annoying to play single player due to the way certain levels are clearly designed for two people to be killing enemies at the same time, but it's not impossible to complete on single player, however, it is more difficult. If we judge it as an actual PS1 game, then it's a little lacking in content and depth, and it's a little bit weird how Rainbow Island's got an enhanced version which updates the game's graphics and backgrounds, and yet Bubble Bobble doesn't have an enhanced version. But if we judge it as a game from 1986, which it technically is, then this game is an absolute must-play. The only issues are the really repetitive music, the infuriating level 83, the lack of any score rewards once you get past 100,000 points, which doesn't take long, and the strange difficulty spikes that happen suddenly and randomly throughout. I would have also liked it to have included more boss levels, because I think that would have given the game more variety and replaced some of the more boring levels. But even without that, I would give this game a strong 7 out of 10, it's got some interesting level designs which are paired excellently with the enemy designs, a good core gimmick with having to trap enemies in bubbles before killing them, and pretty good graphics which have lots of changing colours in every level, although the graphics are dated by PS1 standards. If you're a fan of arcade games or co-op platformers, then I can't recommend this game enough. It's fun, challenging, and just a blast to go through. It's definitely earned its place on my game shelf. Wait a minute, there's something missing from here. What's that you've got there, bub? Buster move, huh? Interesting. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more reviews coming soon. 
If you've watched all of my videos and want more content, then maybe take a look at my blog where I do written reviews and top 10 lists. I'll put a link to that below in the description. Please don't hesitate to leave a comment below letting me know what you thought to the video, and what you think about Bubble Wobble too. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!